farmer camp, how are you doing? Right, so how many cars from the back? Uh, 12, what's that, 16? 16 cars off the back. So that means... We want... Oh, let's see. 16 off that is 19, plus 1 is... So that's 10, is it? I think we want it on 10. I think that's right. Is that right? Mental maths? If we get this wrong, we're losing bonuses. Well, we've got 16 cars to do. 12 and 4 is 16 cars. So, you basically, yeah. Because, you know, you have to deduct the number and then add 1. I know that works. If we can find the right job number. What was that? 45. Right, if we put that there, and then we uncouple... And we start pulling away... It's job 85. There's the split there. 11, 85. Bingo! Right, well that does that. Might as well leg it and hand the job in. Twenty-four minutes, nice. Fifty-four grand, that'll do. I didn't fail at maths, Chris, did I? So... Mm. <laughs> right, put that in reverse. Oops. <laughs> God knows we had some shenanigans with maths failure yesterday. I've learnt my lesson. I don't think it is, but I think that is the easiest way for me. Just how many cars do you want? Knock that number off, add one. Simple. That works. I'm sticking with it.
Yeah, but Baz, when you've got three jobs, which we had the other day, it becomes even harder to do that. It's it's easier to just work from the back. Always. Because one day you might have four jobs in there. Yeah, but what's the point in adding three lots of jobs up when you can just deduct one? <laughs> it's got to be easier. Railway Empire 2 coming on the 25th of May. Railway Empire 2. <coughs> okay. Who makes it? About 47 grand, nice. Got the bonus on both of them, nice. Yeah, the bonus on one of those paid for the damage to the car earlier. <laughs> 745 grand, minus whatever we owe on this. Oh, the same people that make Tropica. Let's have a look. of clever entrepreneur take small railway company in the 1800s blah 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 gaming mind studios calypso media so it's literally the same people who made the first one and published it Sonatol mentioned it yesterday, that other game. Uh, that logistic automation game. What was that called again? One that's been out a couple of years. No, it wasn't railroads, it was something else. He said it's a bit grindy, but it has good automation. Was it Hydroneer? It rings a bell. I think it was hard to do. Yeah, it was that one. Well, the first Railway Empire has very positive reviews, so it can't be that bad.
Automation Empire has mixed reviews. Indeed, Baz, I did some grinding last night. I think it got us like 14... I think I got 14 points. Well, I've got some more attempts today. I had a bunch of good games and then some terrible games. Like, unwinnable games. Played Railway Empire in 2017. There you go. So why are the green lights not on? Seven thousand nine hundred. That's not too bad, but we haven't had squirrel tax on that yet. Eight hundred in squirrel tax. I'll get it. Right, so with all our fees paid, we have seven hundred and twenty three grand. Look at that time bonus deadline, minus twenty percent nearly. Brutal. Let me quickly make a backup of that. So, we've got three militaries and a hazmat to get at some point. Let's go have a look at the military down here. So many jobs. Hazmat 3, Military 3. Hazmat 3, Military 3. I mean, they pay stonkingly well. But look at the... Like, you need... Can we not have something in between? There's a Military 2, but it only pays 17 grand. That's a quarter of a million, aren't those two? Madness. But the trouble is, it reduces your bonus down to the point where there's no way you're going to get bonuses on anything. Logistic hall. Yeah, you know, I doubt you get the bonuses. Yeah, we can't afford them, dude. Oh. Has military three is four hundred grand. Hazmat three is two hundred nine. Seven hundred ninety just for those two. Eight hundred ninety. Nine hundred and twenty thousand for those licenses. Nine hundred and twenty. Goods factory have been to Buzz here. We've been there a few times at the early game. Because most of the drop offs, you go in, you swing to the right, and then you reverse into the D. I think it's D yard.
see if there was a hazmat 2 stuff that would be worth uh, you know upgrading our hazmat licenses sorry a military one or something with a hazmat 2 that's no good that's no good steel mill i don't see any more steel mill That's what, we don't go there very often, the farm. We do not go to the farm very often. 13 grand for a farm run. But you can't really combine it with anything. Yeah, that's right. You can't buy military 3 without military 1 and 2. That's, that's the issue. Fact, food factory in town. Nitrogen. Ooh. Ooh, hello. Hazmat 2. Now we're talking. Food factory in town. Three grand. Load and prepare train with empty Sun Omni containers. What's a Sun Omni? Deliver empty containers. It's a bonus seven for going there anyway, I suppose. Shipping containers. Hmm. Well, you've either got these two delivering argon for like 32, 32 grand of argon to the steel mill. Or you're probably looking at these. They're all haulable by one DE6. That I would just stick on the front because they're empty and you want to drop them last. But then if they're empty, they may derail because they're annoying like that. This one requires you to load and will then be filled. So that will generate another job. So we could do that one first, that one second. And then we can load these two, that one third, that one fourth. If we're lucky, they'll all go into the same drop point, but I doubt it because that's quite long. But you would put that on the back, you would have that next. Then you would have this, and then you would have that. But I think, you know, we can do that. It's probably a close line, yeah. Right, five, six. Big job, next big job. Okay, that's the one we want to find. So we've got six cars. SL55, six gray looking cars. Will they be near the loading bay, possibly? Do 
you reckon they're empty flat cars? Yeah, you might be right, actually. That would make sense. Actually, that would make sense. Wow, just one on his own. Not there. Size of this thing. Acetylene. That's it. Okay. Yeah, we've got to load it. So if you take this job, the reason we're doing it, Eddie, is because if you take this job, it will generate another job and it will go to the same place. So a shunting job like this that says load and prepare, when you finish this, you finish loading it and you park it, when you go back to the station to hand it in, there'll be another job, which will be a freight job taking that to the factory in town. And that's what we want because of all of our jobs are going there. That's the reason for doing it. I swear we were past that. Are you serious? Yeah, Baz, I don't I don't even think you even have a Russian cruiser. The only thing you have Russian is the battleship. I might have a low level DD, but that's about it. DMC 
see Tom, how you doing? Yeah, I, I don't play carries either, Bez. I mean, it's probably something I should play just to get an appreciation. The problem is, like, to, I don't know. I suppose I could do a co-op or something. Because the first few games, you're going to completely suck at it. I think playing a carry is a bit like an RTS game. It's, it's a completely different game. Different playstyle. the carrier though. I mean if it's like a low point carrier run then you probably get enough points anyway no matter what you do. You get points just by spotting things. top right log from the cop of the game. Stick around for a few minutes. Okay, so it's going to be a loading yard down here, isn't it? Can't, uh, you, there are different kinds of DD, though, legal, legal. They don't have to be torpedo DDs. There's gunboat DDs. DDs that you can get lots of points of DD just by spotting and staying hidden. Because one of its primary roles, League Legal, as a DD, is to spot things. You have an insane spot range and a very small spotted range. So, what you can do is you can go out, spot other ships, and then your battleships can hit them. And you get points. As long as they stay spotted, you get lots of points for that. Your torpedoes. Like, the Japanese DDs are pretty much the best for torpedo range. But the other DDs are, have other abilities. Like, they have very strong guns, so they can take out other DDs. So you, if you're that kind of a DD, then you want to stick with your cruisers and your battleships. And they can support you if you get attacked. But you can take out other DDs. And you can do things like smoke for them. You was in a game with four subs, Baz. That's outrageous. And some of the other DDs have hydroacoustic, which is insane. Oh, you mean Tolkien. Look at the top right of your screen, Sith, and if you see the word spotted, if it's there, you're getting points if they get hit.
Yeah, you see, Baz, um, Sonny was a, a battleship man. He always played battleships. But I kind of give him some pointers on playing DDs, and now he enjoys it. So, battleships are still his go-to, though, I think. Oh, that's not loading bay. That's the loading bay. Aussie Joanne, thank you for 15 months. There have been a few Aussies in today, it's cool. Yeah, cruisers, like, I, I either play DDs or cruisers. Like, it, for me, it goes DD, then cruiser, then battleship, then pretty much never aircraft carrier. Although I stick subs in there a bit now. I started on... Was that American subs? I can't remember. I started on one tree and they were they were rubbish. Like, they couldn't stay underwater for more than about three minutes. But some of the subs I'm on now can stay underwater for like four and a half minutes. So you can actually get things done and get away. Well, Baz, if, any, if somebody's showing you the broadside, then yeah. I deserve it anyway. <laughs> I love topping battleships, Baz. I love seeing the health bar go boom, 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 and then have a flood. It's just so nice. That moment when you see a battleship with like four torpedoes going at it that it can't possibly dodge. And you just know that guy sat there going, ah, crud. <laughs> boom, you're out of the game. <laughs> World of Warships. My favourite thing to do with a DD though is top another DD. If you can top a DD, if you can sink another destroyer with your torpedoes, it's super satisfying. Hang on, I need to have my uh, tablet. I've only got one more tomorrow and then I'm done. Actually, leg legally the best thing to do is to try and find, like whether you want to play destroyer, carrier, whatever, try and find a country that suits your play style. Because each country tends to specialize in a different area and it needs to suit your play style. If you go down a particular country and find out it doesn't line up with your play style, you waste a lot of time. Right, so this won't yet show that there's something in range to load because we haven't handed the job in yet. Yeah, so we need to go and hand the job in and then it'll activate that. So do that. It'll tell us pick up those from G, set them to D7L, load them. And then take them to E eleven O. It's now at the bottom. It'll say training range to load. Swiss Navy. <laughs> and 
No, I don't play water tanks. I used to. I think I think they've changed the game quite a bit. Oh, War Thunder! No. I stopped playing War Thunder many years ago when they changed the uh, the XP progression and made it stupid. I like warships. I think they've they've arguably spoiled it in a few ways, but it's still pretty pretty decent. But they are starting to annoy the player base a bit. Kind of doing what they did with World of Tanks. Oh yeah, it was. Pep. War Thunder was a lot of fun in the early days. A lot of fun. And they totally ruined it. And it was in the, in the interest of money. Wait, how can we point it on? Wait a second. E eleven O already has a load of stuff on it. Really? You want me to... Really? Am I missing something here? Uncouple the E11 O. This is E11 O. And this has a load of cars already on it. Yeah, but it's not a logistic, it's just a shunt and it doesn't... It just says load the cars, uncouple them here. It doesn't mention... It's unusual, Japimont. Very unusual. Logistic jobs might have that. I'm going to have to couple up to them push them out of the way but then uncouple because I don't want those cars unless they happen to be going the same place but I doubt it I can't stand playing DDs without smoke though. I hate it. Like a DD is like a... It's so easy to kill. Without smoke, you're very vulnerable. Thankfully, we don't need to push it very far. Yeah, 
In fact, we could just put this on the front anyway and take it. I don't know. Let's go and hand it in. Right, so if we hand this in, it should generate another job. I did hear it here. Is that it? That's the one. So that just generated that job. So now we should have those two got two lots of empty containers we have one of them attached we can go and get the other one we have 09 and 64 so we have 64 on the front which is that one if we find 09 probably that one Sure what you mean, Jimbo. The icon compressors in cargo containers, but surely they're not connected to power source on ships and trains. Uh, I don't know what they do, to be honest. I mean, if they're refrigerated, you'd have to have an electric connection all through, wouldn't you? I don't think a battery would last long enough. Right, that is 09, so we've now got 64, then 09. Now we need to find 25, and then 00. zero. These are all nitrogen containers. There's 00. zero. It's got to be 25 there, then. Nope, that's 15. That one. One I shoved out the way, forty two. Don't tell me you put it in a different yard, you scumbag game.
think it did, you know. Wait, where did they put it? Really? Really, game? Really? You're going to make me come all the way back here. Hello. Uh, what was your question? Is it the brake shoe overheating the version yet? Oh no, yeah, yeah, that's that's the thirtieth of June edition. Overheating brakes, fading brakes, snapping couplers, all kinds of things. My Steam keeps popping up saying Hannah is obsessed by Plato. I want to know, J10, I want to know how many hours she has in that game now. Like, when the rest of us pretty much stopped playing it, she just carried on. I reckon she's got, if I had to guess, a couple of hundred hours in that now. I kind of feel like they should have let you build bigger restaurants, you know? Like, more automation, bigger restaurants. Full on Factorio, that's the way they should have gone. Literally, Hannah, honestly, no word of a lie, I swear I have not even looked at your hours. That was a complete guess. No word of a lie. It was an actual complete guess. But I'm not surprised you're on 236. Yeah, plate up the game. If they, if they basically brought in more of the automation and made it more Factorio-esque, I'd have a much deeper desire to play, you know? Because that's the stuff I like. He's, he's figuring out all the... all the machine automation of it. Right, 
what we got. That is 25, so we got that, that. So just put zero, zero on the back. Yeah, but they have to scale it. Factorio scales with their automation. Designer kitchen. <laughs> Some of the room layouts it generates are actually stupid. I will say that. Like, it'll generate a building and it'll have partitions in it. You just look at it and just think, who would ever play that? Like, it's not even restaurant shaped. Yeah, exactly, Hannah. Like, you find a few seeds that you know generates a nice, nice restaurant. You tend to just play that for a while, and then they ruin it. to the big one. I think it's it's that one. Should be it. Food factory in town. So which way do we want to go to the food factory in town? I guess we've got to go through the steel mill. Star, oh, nice. What are we on now? Ninety five. <laughs> That's not bad. Do a few stars later, hopefully. Depends what comes up.
I just think if we if we do what we should do is enough points to win but not really more because I've got a feeling the game's going to go oh so you're generating 100 points well let me just bump you up the league quite a bit I'm 42, even though it was 43. So the back's on C6I, then C4I, then D2I, then C6I. What a scumbag game. C6I, C4I, that one's, that one's the annoying one. So the front and back want to go to six. <laughs> Literally the front and back go to the same place. Six C four, that's not too bad. We'll see. We'll figure out a plan. Hey, how does... Yeah, I'm going to have to pull in drop C forward reverse drop C and then I'll I need to reverse out of there again that's the annoying thing but we're not going to be able to so after then pull forward and then reverse into D and then pull forward and reverse back into C it's meh C4I can have both C and D no 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 no, D's a different yard. Look, D's the yard at the top. So we've got to drop C6I, then C4I. So they're both in the C yard. But then the next one is a D. Completely different yard. And then back to C. Drop off C4, I, and D2. It's an I, not a 1, by the way. D, D, C4, I, D2, I. How can we drop off? I mean, drop that off. How? We can't do that. We can't drop off 
C and D with that in between. Can't do that. Need the third drop on C4 I temporarily. No, we'll be going to C6 I first. The back of the train has the C6I, then it has C4I, then it has D2I, then it has C6I. <coughs> Squeeze me. So we're coming from the northeast, that's at the bottom. We're dropping C6I, which is that one. The next drop is C4I, so we need to pull forward, reverse into C4. Then we pull forward, reverse into the 5O and drop the other one, the D1, that one. And then we go back into... 6i part the other bit is what we can try and do that 5 0 step you don't need to do you could just leave it on 4i maybe Hang on, it depends how long it is. Six, and then four, so we want that and that. Actually, they'll both fit, won't they, because they're quite small. So we can leave those two on four I. Yeah, it'll work because it's short enough. Working out the number on the decoupler, that's going to be fun. How are you doing? Thank you for 59 months, sir. So at the back we have 12 cars, and at the front we have 6 cars. Which means if we take 12 away from that we get 17, and then add 1 we get 18. That should drop off the rear 12 cars, if my maths is correct. Right. 
full beans, let's go. Got a schedule to stick to here. East side is a hill. I seem to remember it just have a, an annoying hill actually. I got a cup of tea. Feeling a bit parched here, so I'm thinking it's been quite a while. Exactly, I need fueling as well. I don't have a big red T button though. I would like to have a button that I can press and it just like sets off something in the house. <laughs> Maybe I could have like different buttons, one for tea, one for biscuits. Cup of tea! And some cake but use the angry door to call for tea. <laughs> use the angry door. <laughs> Made. I don't think they're that popular anymore. I remember when they came out years ago, many years ago, people wanted them, but I don't think they're that popular. The problem with teas made is you have to set them up before you want the tea. Nobody can be bothered doing that. is set it up. Well, if I want a cup of tea, I, I can go and boil the kettle and make a cup of tea. If I want to set my teas made up so that I have tea in the morning, I have to go and physically like, if it's in your bedroom, you've got to go up to the bedroom, get the pot, get the cups, get the milk, get whatever you need, put it all in there, and that's in the morning after it's made you a tea, you then have to clean it all out as well. It's just such a faff. Ain't got time for that. I've heard of Infra. Not tried it yet. I might as well just get up, walk downstairs and make a cup of tea. It's like, gets you out of bed. You probably want to go to the bathroom anyway, so you're already up. You see, that doesn't work for us, Zenlock, because, like, my kettle has a switch on it that when you press it down, it turns off as soon as the water boils. So even if you had a Wi-Fi plug, it wouldn't help because it wouldn't physically turn the kettle on.
don't need a new kettle. I have a kettle that switches off automatically, and that's what you want. get those um j10 you can get those what they call cook cooker cooker but with a q stupid name it basically does hot water for you doesn't it but it's, it's pretty expensive but it's like instant 90 celsius water just get one of them walk downstairs instantly make yourself a cup of tea a, i've never heard of it a, it's a cooker with a q q u o Q-U-O-C-K-E-R or K-E, I don't know. I don't know how you spell it. It's basically like a cylinder that goes underneath, and it goes in your kitchen, and it's like a hot water cylinder that sits underneath the tap in, in the cupboard. And it can also do things like fizzy drinks as well, like it can you put gas cylinders in it so you can get cold and hot. But it is, it's so expensive, just for the convenience of not having to boil something. It's such a posh, per posh person's gadget. Biomech, thank you for 26 months. Yeah, I think in an office environment, it's it's pretty good. But I don't think you'd get the benefit to warrant the price. Kets kettle. I can ask Alexa to put the kettle on there. Really? Does it fill it with water as well? Does does it? Can it sense how much water's inside of it? Because if it can't, then that's a bit rubbish. We don't have hazmat three yet, Crow Daddy. One hundred and six months time. It's not that time of the month, but rather this time of the month. Oh, well, as long as it's not that time of the month. Thank you for 106 months' time. Why is my Tesla giving me a notification? Uh-oh, I'm exporting power. Please tell me my car's plugged in. Literally chucking two kilowatts onto the grid right now. Not having that. Because it's decided that it's not going to be cloudy anymore. It's going to be sunny. I 
That's not been going on for too long. That's nice. 